Hello everybody, my name is Cameron Brown and a warm welcome to the How to Cameron channel. Smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. I make quality videos. You leaving a like would make me feel fuzzy inside because I strive for your appreciation. That was probably one of the most bogus intros I've ever done. Today I wanted to talk about A-level business. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because... I'm genuinely really annoyed about it. I actually have to make this video just a vent because <laughs> I feel like I can't rant about it anymore to random people. I have to make a goddamn video on this. But on a serious note, business studies for me is a subject that's overall just sucked. Like I highly regret taking it. And on top of that, I don't even feel like I'm performing very well in it. I feel like it's causing me a lot of stress. Now, the thing is about it is I am actually performing well. It's just that like the work that we do in the subject just i don't feel like it's interesting i feel like the topics that we go through are so boring that i, I feel like i'm just going to forget about them and i'm kind of anxious of that but today i wanted to make a video talking about a level business so let's just jump into this i'm philip defranco haha <laughs> Now, this video is very specific to my sixth form and where I study. Uh, I guarantee if you take business at a good sixth form, or a much better sixth form at least, it probably won't be anywhere near as bad because the content itself in A-level business is not that bad. It, it seems like the way that I'm taught business studies at school it's just so draining like it's ridiculous it's just note taking and i'll get into it later i need to actually talk about the insight behind it so people understand where i'm coming from uh, properly before i rant about it i go to the same sixth form as where my secondary school was based the secondary school and sixth form are together and when i was applying for sixth form i never really considered any other options i presume that because my secondary school was great uh, i mean it wasn't even that great like looking at the grades that people achieved it wasn't fantastic, but it was good. It was good enough. And I did well in my GCSEs, so that's what I took from it. I assumed that sixth form would be good as well. The sixth form that I go to, it kind of sucks. Like, people just don't seem to be very intelligent there. A lot of people at our sixth form just seem to be failing, and I can't see a lot of other sixth forms in the country performing in that way. The Ofsted rating is really low. The school itself, like mixing between sixth form and secondary school, like every single classroom is shared. It's the same with the teachers as well. There are very few teachers that only teach sixth form. It, it just ruins the quality of the school. I, you know what? I don't hate the sixth form. I just give myself a bit of strife for not actually considering any other options, like any other sixth forms or colleges. So that was one mistake that I made. So pretty much from my A-levels, I chosen physics, chemistry, and business. Physics and chemistry are going amazingly. They are amazing subjects and I'm glad I'm taking them. The one I have a problem with though is business and business very much drains me. I say this with no over-exaggeration. If I didn't take business, I would be much, much, much happier. And there are many reasons why and I'm gonna go into them later. So when I was choosing my A-levels, I was considering either business, biology, or maths. Maths, I was deterred from because I remember at GCSE, uh, I went to the parents' evening and literally the maths teacher was like, maths is a real step up, guys. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. Uh, don't take it. He literally said that to me. Even though I got a seven at a, a GCSE, which is a grade A, I did not take maths because I assumed that it was really hard because that's what the maths teacher told me. He said that you really needed to have a talent for maths. Now, it was a little bit crazy me taking physics, but not maths, but actually that's not hindered me at all. That's not where I dropped marks. So me not taking maths was already a bit of a big mistake because I know a lot of people personally, some of my friends who take maths A-level and they say that it's not that hard. I mean, it's hard as it's an A-level, but it's not as hard as they pictured it. I really regret taking business over maths simply because I'd be more interested in maths because obviously I use it with both my other two subjects and also it would allow me to actually have more relevant A-levels. I chose business because I thought it was easy and I'm not even lying. I literally chose business because I wanted a subject that I could kind of not have to worry too much about. I hate to say this, I don't want to sound egotistical, but I'm doing really well in business. I know all the content. I struggle with very few things. I feel like the teachers that teach me business genuinely hate me. So that that's fantastic also. Effectively, I got a grade B at GCSE. Um, I would have got a grade A if it wasn't for the coursework. They actually phased out coursework. The GCSE year after us, there was no coursework. If there was no coursework, I would have got a grade A. But I got a grade B because I think I got a, a grade D in the coursework. Simply because when we were doing our coursework, 
It was very neglected and it was in year 10. So I wasn't even that bothered about doing well in it. A similar thing happened in geography. I would have got an A star in geography if it wasn't for my coursework. And history, actually, thinking about it. Flipping heck, I would have got an A in history if it wasn't for my coursework, in which I got an E in the mock, may I just mention. One of the first things that annoys me with business is my predicted grade. And you may be thinking to yourself, Cameron, what do you mean your predicted grade? I'm sure you're predicted quite high. My predicted grades now are ABB. Um, originally, they were AAB. But now they're ABB simply because in physics, for some reason, everyone's predicted grade is decreased. Our UCAS predicted grade. At our school, they're very serious about UCAS predictions. Uh, UCAS predictions are the grades that you put in on your UCAS application, which allow you to apply to unis quite a bit before the uni term actually starts. So for my case, 2019. On this application form, you put in your predicted grades and I'm predicted ABB, A in chemistry, B in physics and B in business. The A in chemistry is fantastic. That's what I wanted. A B in physics is not ideal, but I understand why. You know, physics is a very tough subject. The fact that I'm not taking maths, you know, a grade B seems fair. I do feel like there is a chance that I may get an A at A level physics, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter about your UCAS grade. It doesn't really mean that much. It's just an indicator of what you'll achieve in the future. But then business a B, really? Like, I don't get why I was predicted a B simply because... I think me being predicted a B in business was very much subjective. It was because of my teachers. My teachers do not like me. The teachers kind of seem to not pick on me, but they seem to make comments about me. Like, it's just really annoying with one of my business teachers. He pretty much tells us to do, say, five chapter summaries uh, from this book. So there's this massive business book. I actually have it. I didn't steal it. I promise I bought it. I actually did. I spent 40 quid on the goddamn course. I'm triggered. And pretty much, it's a massive, thick book. And the problem is with this book is that it's so non-concise. It is the worst book I have ever seen in my life as a revision book, which is how it brands itself. It literally goes on about what profit is for a whole page. Like, does it think I'm disabled? Like, I don't know. But pretty much the book is super over the top. And when you do a chapter summary, you kind of have to read all of it so you get the proper details from it. And I know some people maybe think to themselves, okay, if you have to do a chapter summary, only write down the pieces that you don't know, the pieces of information you don't know. And I don't want to sound like a prick, but almost everything I read in that revision guide, I already know. It's common sense. For example, break even point. Guys, what is the break even point? You won't guess. Like, it's, it's so easy to me because I did it at GCSE and we literally go through it in lesson. And that's the thing that annoys me. He assigns us to write five chapter summaries. And then a couple of weeks later, we'll go through the chapter in lesson, which is overly sufficient to me. I understand that there are people in my class who may not understand business as easy as me. It may not come to them as easy. And that's not because I'm super smart. It's just because I did it at GCSE and I paid attention. And it also is because I have a very good memory. I can understand maths very well. And there is actually quite a good amount of maths in business, which is flipping fantastic. Uh, I found something interesting about it, at least. I, I understand almost everything we learn in business just through the lessons. Like, I don't have to write the notes. And the notes take so long. Like, literally, we get assigned, like, three chapter notes a week, I would say, on average. And to do three, it takes two hours. So every week, we have to do two hours of notes. Now, I understand that some people may be quick to go, it's an A-level, Cameron. You should be putting that much time in extra. And that is true. But when I feel like I'm writing notes that I already know, I feel like I'm just wasting my time. I'm a very efficient learner, right? And in general, I'm an efficient person. I like to focus on things that are rewarding and actually mean something. If I'm just writing notes about things I already know, what's the point? How am I going to be motivated to do that when I could literally choose to revise for a different subject like chemistry or physics? Something that actually comes across as tricky to me. It is insane to me how I've been predicted the same grading flipping business than physics. Like literally with physics. Physics is so much harder. On top of that, the mocks that we had. We had mocks, right, for business studies. And we had mocks, okay? And in my mocks, I achieved A, A, A. I achieved grade A's all around. I may just mention that I was predicted ABB as my UCAS grade. I don't see why other people I know, you know, they get grade A's all across the board as well. I don't see why they get predicted A stars when literally I got, or I got three A's 
and I got no A stars. I actually got grade Bs predicted. Like, it just seems so ludicrous to me. ABB is not a bad set of grades, though, for UCAS, and I'm not complaining about them. In general, they're really good. But it just seems so stupid to me. How does that make sense? Gets three A's in the mocks. Gets predicted ABB. Like, they predict me to go down. How does that make sense? Literally, the highest grade you could get for AS is an A anyway. So I couldn't have done any better by my grade. Now, here's the thing, though. I didn't get an A in my mock for business studies. I actually got a B. Because, get this, 76%, I believe that's what I got, is a grade B at AS level. Are you kidding me? Like, I went through the grade boundaries for AS business, which is the first year of business, what we were judged on. And on almost every single year of grade boundaries, it was 70% even for an A. How come I get 75% and then I get a B in the mock and then I'm predicted a B? How does that make any sense? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It genuinely annoys me so goddamn much. And I talked to my teacher about this and he, he had none of it. He wasn't having any of it. He was like, you got a B. Shut up. What he then says is if you were to do a test, there's like a 40% chance you'd get a, a, an A and 60% chance that you'd get an A. And I was just thinking to myself, how did you quantify that? How did you come up with that probability? The reason why I was confused to why he came up with that probability is because it's so false. What do you mean there's a chance I'll get an A, but then there's a chance I'll get a B? What, so you mean some days I may do an exam and I might have flipping dementia? Like, is that what you're saying to me? Like, I'm just going to forget all the common sense? Like, I don't get it. On top of that, something else annoyed me in business, and this was one of my teachers. The other teacher we were given these two questions to do in business two long-winded questions and that was fine uh, we had a lesson to do them and we had to finish it off for homework i was stressed though because i had a chemistry test afterwards so give me some leeway god dang it i did the first question fine and i got uh, through about two-thirds of the second question I forgot to finish it off as homework. An honest mistake. I was stressed out. I was revising for my chemistry test, which may I just say I got 88% in. So it was worth it, you know, on a topic that I was confused about already. The teacher, the teacher goes around and asks everyone for it to be handed in. And she comes up to me. I'm the first person who didn't have it uh, finished. And she pretty much got very, very angry at me. She then said I had to finish it off by lunchtime, but actually... It was break next in which I go to get food and eat because I was hungry and also I had a lesson afterwards and she was like, I don't care, just get it done. And I was literally thinking to myself, what do you mean, love? You're crazy. Uh, I understand that it was my fault for not finishing the last question, but I didn't realise it was that important. I didn't realise it was more important than the chemistry test I had, which I believe was next lesson. Well, that's what I thought I believed. I don't remember. But then I finished the second question in lesson because the lessons are extremely slow paced. I hate to say this, but a lot of people in our class don't understand simple concepts. I, I may see these concepts as simple in business, but that's probably just because it just comes easier to me. You know, not, not because I'm like a flipping alpha male or anything, but just because it comes easier to me. Like I understand logical things more easily. A lot of people get confused about business topics. It's not like they don't understand specific topics because they can't. It's simply because they get confused about them. So it doesn't prove that they're dumb, you know? So she then went around asking everyone else for their homework in. And she was really angry at me. And a lot of people forgot it. And she didn't even seem to get angry at them. Like, she literally made jokes with them. She made them laugh. She took in both of these questions. Bearing in mind that I finished the second question because it was only half done when I handed it in. Uh, I handed it into her on the lesson that she requested it because I finished it in lesson and she was already a bit like off with me. It was very obvious that she was clearly angry at how I managed to catch up on the work during lesson. She probably got annoyed at me because I did the work that we had to do in class and I managed to do the homework as well. I presume that she wanted me to kind of be punished for missing the homework. And you know what, I'm going to be fair here. It was clearly my fault for not doing the homework so I understand why she was angry but how she went about it was just pretty bad in general. Like her shouting at me only and not shouting at any other people instead making jokes about how they didn't do it jokes that they laughed at themselves as well we handed it in and she marked the first question out of the two questions that we did for homework effectively what that meant is i didn't actually have to bother finishing the second question because it was never marked which i thought was a bit stupid and i didn't 
expect the first question to be even marked. Everyone got their homework back. And I have this theory that she deliberately marked mine low. I would say the whole class, bar like three people, got full marks on this question. It was a nine mark question and I got eight. And, and I got a few people kind of making fun of me saying, oh, you say that you find business easy and you're so good at it, but you got the lowest mark in the class. Like people saying crap like that. That's what people said about it. And it annoyed me. So I asked her, why did I not get the final mark? And she says this, you dropped the mark because of the quality of your written communication, because of my handwriting. Because of my handwriting, I dropped a mark. Now here's the thing, I don't have amazing handwriting, but I don't have bad handwriting. Like my handwriting is all right. I could easily read what I wrote. Um, and I've never had an issue with my handwriting before. I've never lost marks for writing badly. The only time people kind of question my handwriting is when you have to read it quickly, when you have to read my handwriting quickly. I think with my handwriting, there are some words that I write down that people may not be able to understand particularly quickly, but if you actually put effort into reading my handwriting, which she should do anyway, because she was a teacher, so she wouldn't have removed a mark from my answer. She clearly picked on me and clearly dropped my mark just because she didn't like how I finished the homework in the class. And that really just shows one reason why I mainly dislike business. It's because of the teachers. The teachers just seem to hate me. And I understand that, yeah, maybe I don't behave in the best way. And yes, I occasionally miss homeworks. But I do think the way that they treat me in terms of kind of like doing things that they know people will take the rip out for me. Because that teacher did know that the whole class kind of recognized me as someone who thinks that they, you know, are the best. Like that's how a lot of people see me in my class, which is simply not true. Like I've, I don't think I've ever said that I'm the best in business in the class. Like I, I've had the top marks, I had the top mock mark. But besides that, I don't think I've ever said, oh yeah, I'm the best at business. So I don't get why people are so hostile against me for that. Anyway, that's going to be the end of today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it and found it knowledgeable to watch. Yes. Uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new today. I, I have a gut feeling that this video will probably get me in some trouble or something like that. But I really don't care. Like, I'm so sick and tired of business that I, I don't think it could really get any worse for me. Unless I literally got kicked out of the subject completely. I mean, that would be ridiculous. I really wish I dropped business when I actually started originally doing it. Because immediately when I started uh, my A-level business course... I didn't like it, so I should have dropped out then. Uh, but you know what? It's too late now. I'm probably going to do well in it, though, so that's one good thing about it. I probably will get an A in it, so it's pretty much a guaranteed A as long as I put in the effort, which I have been doing. I'm not a particularly organized person, though. I think that's one reason why one of the teachers doesn't like me, because I don't have a folder, like, at school. I have a folder for business, and it is in order. It's just I keep it at home because I think it's just more valuable being at home rather than at school. But regardless of that, I don't even know what this video was. I don't know if it turned out well or not because I recorded most of it yesterday and I don't remember it. But regardless of that, subscribe to the channel if you're new today. And I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye.